Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Q today and really looking forward to this discussion. We've been talking about this for a while. It's about conflict. And this is where teams that have ways to manage, handle, uh, work with conflict really are high performing, high producing teams. They are teams that can navigate through conflict successfully and, and really help to produce a lot and high quality and good stuff. Right, Q? That's it, my friend. Conflict resolution is a big thing, you know. And honestly, I think people sometimes make too much of it. You're not going to find conflict all the time, right? People don't fight all the time and etc. But when there are disagreements, it's it's there is a little bit of uh, art and a little bit of science how to deal with that. So, so when we talk about conflict, um, so one of the things, uh, I don't know if uh, our, you or the viewers are familiar with uh, crucial conversations, right? So, so I guess to put a definition around conflict, we want to say when things are high stakes, right? When they're really important things and they kind of become somewhat personal or they become very important to us. Let's put it that way. And we really feel that sense and urge that we really feel strongly and others may feel strongly, but in an opposite direction, right? Yeah, that's that's the case when um, you have very good people working together, right? We we have strong feelings about some things. And, uh, you know, I am known for having very strong opinions about something I think the Scrum community is peppered with, you know, which I call hippie Scrum, you know, and uh, I'll fight for the stuff I think it's right, right? But as long as it's done respectfully, it's fine, you know, I mean, we don't need to agree to work together, but we have to agree to work together, right? So yeah. that's that's a, a subtle difference. We don't have to agree to work together, but we have to agree to work together. That's That's a tiny little difference in there. So then that means we kind of teams have to come up with like a protocol, right? On how to handle conflict. And this is something you want to do ahead of time, right? Not in the middle of the conflict. <laughs> yep. Yep. And uh, it's actually a very simple thing, right? When you come to think, when things start to go for some reason a bit too hot, right? You have to imagine, hey, what are you going to do about that? But you have to do that when everybody's level headed, you know, it's one of those days that everything went well and everybody's it's cool with stuff. So that's when you think about a conflict protocol. And a conflict protocol can be a, a very simple thing. You know, I, I don't believe in three page instruction manual for anything, right? Or even more pages. It's just, hey, you know what? When we disagree, uh, let's break the discussion, take 15 minutes, 20 minutes away, you know, and then let's come back and talk about it so people calm down, etc. Or it can be a bit more elaborate like hey when we have conflict we do voting or something like that but the idea is think about what you're going to do when there are disagreements and uh, one tip i always tell people is be very careful not to create triangles and by triangles what i mean is a hey, uh, dave and i have an argument and uh, I go and I talk to Gary on and said, you know, Dave was mean to me. And then Dave goes to somebody else and say, Q was mean to me. You are starting to create triangles, right? You start involving yeah. a lot of people in it. And uh, that's when things usually don't go very well. Yeah. And that's, uh, so, so that's, that's where, you know, we talk about scrum values, you know, transparent, well, the, you know, the pillar of transparency, openness as a value, right. And, and respect, uh, that's another scrum value. So we always want to, uh, you know, pull that into the equation. The other thing, and I know from uh, crucial conversations is start with heart, right? What is my motivation? Why do I feel so strongly about this? Uh, am I, am I, am I becoming, uh, is the reason why I'm getting into conflict to serve myself or is it truly to serve the team? So it's kind of also important to check your motivation, uh, when things are starting to get into conflict, right? Yep, absolutely. So conflict protocol is a big thing, you guys. Decide on what, how we're going to handle it. And do that when everybody is calm and composed and etc. Now, when it comes to that, let's think about toxic and difficult people. And there are two very different things, right? You can have people who are very difficult. Some people think I qualify into that one. And there are people who are very toxic. Difficult 
it's okay. You can deal with that. Difficult is people that are opinionated. They're very passionate and all that stuff. I always say, if you put a bunch of scrum people or lean people or Kanban people in the room, there will be a disagreement, you know, because people are passionate about what they believe, right? Right. And uh, I am very agnostic about stuff, but a lot of people are very passionate about it, one particular solution or another. For me, it's what works best for that situation. So that can be difficult. Now, toxic people, that's the ones that they cause a lot of trouble. And toxic people, they do things intentionally, right? I uh, I have to deal with a situation right now at a client. We have a person who is toxic. And uh, there was the impression that was just somebody who is difficult. But you can tell if somebody is pushing an agenda just for the sake of favoring themselves over everybody else. And that's a toxic person, right? So there's a big difference between difficult, difficult and toxic. Now, the thing is, how do you deal with them? Is it any different? Do you deal with the difficult person the same way or difficult, uh, you deal with a toxic person? Or is there a difference? So, Dave, what do you think? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's about, uh, I guess, established patterns, right? So if you mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, difficult, some people might say, I'm a difficult person. I don't know, right? There, there's something about people that are very passionate. And sometimes that can be disruptive. But when you're toxic, you are, you know, you think about toxic waste, how it spills out and it, you know, starts to erode, you know, the the, the surrounding environment. So uh, I, I think you have to both handle them separately, different situations, right? Yeah, not so much. Think about this, okay? The problem with either difficult or toxic behavior, and specifically toxic behavior, is it's... Uh, waste creation machine right because no matter what you do you are going to spend a lot of time dealing with that okay if you are the person who has to deal with that you're going to spend a lot of time dealing with that and uh, that creates stresses and uh, impacts the team negatively and all that stuff right so there are five things i would tell you the first one you sort of mentioned already, Dave, is dig deeper. You have to figure out why the person is acting that way, right? Years ago, I had a guy working for me, he was a developer, and uh, he was having a lot of personal problems. And the guy was really good, really good at what he did. But he needed to work remotely to deal with that. And that was like 15 years ago or even more. I don't remember. And of course, at that time, nobody would allow that. Well, I had to fight really hard to let, for the company to let him work remotely. He did, and he never dropped the ball despite of all the difficulties. And uh, eventually that situation was over and he kept being a great That's good. contributor, right? But you have to dig deeper. If you don't yeah. dig, you don't know what the reason is. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Something I've heard in the past that I've that stuck with me over the years is: is it a can't or a won't issue? Mm -hmm. If the person can't, then you know, is it is it is it time to get the person help? Um, is there, you know, that as management or with management, you know, that that was a great example, right? Like the person needs to to be remote to do their best. Okay, fine opposite of can't or along with can't ask if it's can't or won't if the person has the skills and the abilities and everything but they just won't do it then i think that's a that's another path to take with regards to what actions um management legal human resources etc should take yeah I, I agree the other one is once you dig deeper and uh, you to the best of your abilities you know what's going on right because there is a limit of how much you can dig. I mean, sometimes there's no way to understand, right? Whatever the situation, whatever you know, if the thing is not getting any better, which probably will not because problems don't just disappear like this, right? Right. Is to call the person and uh, give direct feedback. And honestly, 
in my experience, don't beat around the bush. You know, I mean, it's like go very direct and say, hey, this is what's going on. Okay. And we need to talk about it. Because uh, if you're going to go in circles, or perhaps we should consider, you know, hippie scrum again, <laughs> that just elongates the problem. And again, right. it's creating more waste than we already have. And right. uh, it's also taxing you because you're going to have to stress yourself even more to deal with that. So direct feedback. I, I love a book called Radical Candor. Mm, yeah, I've heard of it. Haven't read it yet. Yeah, it's a great book. You know, it's like give direct feedback, you know, because uh, we don't have time to waste, you know. Yeah. And I think, you know, I kind of if you think of the scrum values, if I think of, you know, courage, respect and openness, I kind of call that the triangle. Right. And I think when, when it comes to giving feedback, that's the triangle, the scrum values, you know, every team member should exhibit, like should be able to be open with respect and with courage, say the things that 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 need to be said. Let's wrap it up with this. Right. I'm kind of a conflict avoider. <laughs> I don't like conflict. Um, I don't know why. I guess I, I just, you know, like to, you know, want teams to be happy all the time. But it's something I've had to work with. Like, again, going back to the scrum values, courage, openness, and respect, right? right. Being able to say what needs to be said in, in, in a respectful way, in an open way. Yeah. What about people that try to avoid conflict? Unfortunately, things usually escalate, right? And that's when you have to, after you have the conversation and explain the consequences, because everything has consequences. Right. So if people keep doing that after you explained everything and you try to dig deep, etc., explain the consequences. Hey, this is what's going to happen if you keep doing this. Right. Right. Explain the consequences. Now, that's going to lead to two other things we have to consider. Number one is you may need to terminate the person. Or you may need to recommend the person to be terminated because some people won't change. It doesn't matter what you do, they will not change. So in order to maintain the team and the organization healthy, you sometimes have to go to a more extreme situation, which includes termination, right? Now, yeah. if you need to terminate, or even if you don't get to that point, right? Let's say you manage to correct it, right? One thing I tell people is document everything. From the initial time that you say, hey, what's going on? Hey, uh, today is Tuesday, blah, 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 blah. This time I talked to person Y and Z, put on your one note or something, you know? Right. And uh, document everything, because if you don't, they're going to come back and say, well, that's the first time I heard about it. I, I was victim of that the first time I had to deal with the situation many moons ago, right? Yep. I mean, seriously, I was 23 and I had 30 some odd people working for me. So I was a kid, right? Yep. I didn't know what to do. And uh, the first thing I learned from that episode, because it ended up in court, is document everything. Because they're going to say, well, that was the first time I heard about it. Right? Yeah. And then, of course, we had to had to be deposing a lot of people who said, no, that's a recurring problem, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. If I had documented everything, I wouldn't get that headache. Because so here's the deal. Dig deeper. Have a very honest conversation. Provide direct feedback. Be very direct. Don't waste time. You know? Explain the consequences if the person still doesn't get it. And uh, if you get one of those people who won't change, very simply put, document everything. And even if you don't get to the point that you need to escalate to termination, document everything. Because if, let's say, the person gets better for a little bit and then the stuff recurs again, and then you can say, hey, listen, we had this conversation, blah, 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 right? So it didn't get any better. So, you know, you're putting me in a difficult situation. Now, bear in mind, if you are a Scrum Master, you are leadership, or whoever has to deal with those things, it's very stressful for you. 
So deal with that as quickly as possible and do what has to be done as quickly as possible. And don't be afraid to reach out to management, human resources, people ops, you know, if you, especially in a large company. And of course, you know, if any of this toxic behavior leads to bullying or, um, you know, uh, any sort of, you know, toxic behavior, do not hesitate. Please, you know, seek the support of management and human resources, people ops. Um, yeah, whatever you call it. But yeah. do not kick the can down the road. Right. Because it's not going to get any easier and it's probably going to get no. worse. And uh, don't transfer the person to another department because yeah, uh, it's just going to be the same thing in another department. It's the same thing. And then somebody <laughs> else has the problem. Do not kick the can down the road. You know, sometimes, right. sometimes you have to do some things that you don't necessarily like. But I worked for a CEO many years ago who once told me something I never forgot. He said, Q, let's say you keep them around for another year or two. You know, we just bounce them around and all that stuff. Eventually, you're going to have to terminate them. Yeah. Then they're two years older. They didn't learn anything new. So and right. you, you cause problem for the organization and for them. I mean, I, I've seen it too. I mean, you know, you, we want to give people chances and we want to give them to improve. But, you know, after so many attempts and tries, you know, again, your management, your HR, people ops, they'll help you with that. But, um, you know, sometimes those are the situations that uh, we come to. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Q. It was a great discussion, a little, little longer than normal, but it's really important because, um, like we say, if, if you and your teams can learn how to navigate through conflict, uh, it's one of the um, one of the hallmarks of a high-performing, uh, high-octane <laughs> team. So what do you all think? If you stuck around this long, thank you very much. Post your uh, thoughts, questions, comments uh, down below, and uh, let us know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.